Hello Internet! Today we are going to be making my server a little bit less annoying. Uh, so, I've been searching for a way to SSH into my server without having to enter a password every time. Uh, on Linux, normally you would do uh, an SSH key, uh, a public key. Uh, you didn't used to be able to do this on Windows, but they just added it. Uh, in patch like seven or build 1708 or something which would have come out in spring I'm guessing here uh, but if you're on the latest version of Windows 10 you should have this uh, this patch which means you can actually do uh, SSH keygen and it will actually ask you to create an SSH uh, RSA key which is great because it means um, can I cancel this Apparently not. We're going to just create another terminal then. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like if I try to get onto my server just normally. Uh, so if I go 192.168.1.117. So this is just a local IP. Uh, it's going to ask me for my username. or And then the password. So we get on and we can do all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, there's not really anything running on here. I just have a uh, Minecraft server currently. Uh, which I can show you guys if you're interested how to set that up so you can actually run a Minecraft server out of Docker. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something that you want to see. But that's sort of the normal flow. The problem is if I have like a script that I want to say update something or deploy something to this server, I need to enter that password every single time I use a command to cross that boundary. And that's really tedious. So what an SSH key is going to allow me to do is instead of authenticating with a username and password, it's going to authenticate with the RSA key. Uh, so I'm going to have a private key on my computer, this computer that I'm using right now, and then out on the server there's going to be a public key. Uh, and if those two match, then it is going to be able to allow me to connect. Uh, so I'm going to actually be able to get onto that server without having to enter a password or anything, it's just going to use those keys. Uh, and so that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. So if we go over to this other side here, we just, uh, it's going to kind of walk you through, like you can just run SSH keygen. If you don't have this, uh, you're, you don't have the latest version of, of Windows. Um, what ended up happening is Windows 10 started shipping with an open SSL uh, version. And so that's why you have SSH and uh, this SSH keygen and things like that. Prior to this, you would have needed to use something like PuTTY, uh, but that isn't required anymore. So if you're on like Windows 7 or Windows 8, this won't work. <laughs> or if you just haven't been updating Windows 10 for multiple months, you won't have this either. Anyway, we can just skip through this. It's going to ask for a, a passphrase. I can't tell you what that is, so I'm just going to enter one. And then it should have created something here users blah ssh id rsa and so we should be able to write this out that didn't do what i wanted why am i not is that it's a directory right confused i that should have been a directory unless I'm very much wrong or I don't know how to run this tool that's also a possibility so let's try this trsa uh, generate public private rse key pair blah already exists overwrite yes uh, do that do that why did it do something different this time I don't know, uh, but this seems more, <laughs> this seems closer to what I was expecting. Uh, so the difference was I gave it the type. I said dash T, the type, is equal to an RSA. So this is an RSA token. Uh, and you'll see it generated two files here. Uh, so your identification has been saved in C users blah dot SSH slash ID underscore RSA. And that one I can't show you because that's actually my private key. Which means if you have that, uh, if anybody gets your private key, any computer that has this public key is going to think that they're, whoever has that key is you. 
Uh, so it's very important that you don't put this anywhere. You don't put this on GitHub. You don't put this in any public online storage. You don't email this to a friend. You don't do any of that. Because if they get this, they become you. And that is no fun for anybody. Uh, so keep that private. But this public key is, is public. Uh, it means you can share it with people. And they can say, I trust this key. And when that happens, then they can authenticate using that key. This is useful for like authenticating with GitHub, for example. You can use uh, this RSA token to authenticate with GitHub. So you don't need to actually use the, the login process. This will allow you to bypass that if you, if you need to do that. Uh, so we can actually cat out that public token. Uh, let's actually, do I want to do that? Uh, keys, random art image. I don't actually know what that is. Doesn't look important, and the key fingerprint, don't know what that is either. Uh, you may not see that if, that if I look that up and it turns out that that's actually not supposed to be shared. You, that'll just be black on your screen, uh, but that, that's there as well. Uh, so what we need to do is take this public key and put it over on our server, uh, which I have a script to do this. <laughs> This is how I deploy my Minecraft server. And so you can see there's three copy commands that copy things over to the server. The problem with this is that would be three passwords that I would have to enter to do these three commands, uh, which is copying over the compo Docker compose file, copying over some of our data, and then uh, actually restarting the server. So what we want to do is SCP. Why did we switch? There we go. I want to SCP over to this, this server. So SCP, whoa. Let's see, SCP, C colon slash users, uh, run dot SSH slash ID RSA pub. We want to copy that over to cloud user at 192.168.1. 117 and we're going to put this in home slash cloud user slash or uh, and then we can just actually put this in dot uh, id rsa dot pub and let's actually give this a bit of a better name let's call this rune w dot id underscore rsa dot pub the name of this file that we're copying over doesn't matter uh, so if you're not familiar with scp it takes two arguments. The first one is the file you're copying. So this will be the local file. And then we're copying it over to a remote server. So it will be this user at this address with this file name. So effectively what we're doing is we're taking this entire file, this public key, and we're copying it over using access from cloud user to this directory. Uh, so if I run this, it should ask for my password. Uh, I can type it wrong because I'm bad and do that and you see it copies and then if we do this I didn't put any periods if you just do uh, dot uh, ID RSA here uh, let's see if I copy this just as an example so if you didn't change the name like I had and just do uh, ID RSA dot pub what's going to happen is you're going to LS and you're not gonna see it. It's not going to appear there. You can see this, this file, when I ls, doesn't show up. But it is there. Uh, if I do lsla, ooh, that's kinda gross. There we go. <laughs> you can see there's some, some hidden things here. Uh, in Linux, a period in front of a file marks it as hidden. So you're not gonna see it. Uh, it is there. It's just, just not showing up if you just are kind of browsing for things. You can still access it and do all of that stuff unless you've changed the access rules, but it's, it's just going to be hidden. So uh, we've done that. So let's do a make dir and make an SSH directory. Uh, so if I lsla again, we'll see that there is an SSH folder now uh, and it's marked flagged as a directory. That's what that D means. Uh, and so in there, we want to touch our SSH uh, authorized keys file. 
And so this is going to create an authorized keys list. Uh, and so the idea here is all of the, the trusted keys, all of the things that you trust on your server or PC or whatever are stored here. And it's just sort of a list of all of them. Uh, so the idea here is to just write that file into this authorized keys. Uh, touch just creates the file. It doesn't actually put anything in there. So if I were to cat it out uh, like this, there's nothing there. Uh, but what we can do is do our public key and concatenate it onto our authorized keys. Uh, so this double double pointer thing uh, is actually going to concatenate onto the file on the right. Uh, so what we're doing is we are catting out the public key, which is just going to write that public key out. And then we are going to take the output of that and append it to this authorized keys thing. So if I do that, my public key is now there. Uh, and you can kind of see where it's coming from, all of this other fun stuff. So that is my public key. Cool. So what I should be able to do at this point ooh, is clear that because it's getting all weird. But I should be able to SSH 1681117. I should be able to run this SSH command now to get into this server, and it shouldn't ask for my password. And if it does, I didn't do this right. Uh, <laughs> I think I think that's what this means. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I see what it's doing. It's asking me for the passphrase that I gave for the private key. Let's see if it just keeps asking for that. Yeah, okay. Um, so this didn't actually help anything. Uh, I'll need to figure out what's causing this. Uh, but what it's actually doing is asking for the key to that ID, uh, the RSA token that we created. So when, it, when we were creating it, it asked us to give it a, a key, a private phrase. And uh, it's asking for that every time we connect now. So that may not have worked as well as I had hoped. Uh, I'm sure there's a way around it, but this is something that I'm like learning as we go. Uh, so not super sure, but that at least gets us a RSA token out there. And I'll need to figure out why it's asking for this passphrase continuously. Uh, there's probably something I can set that will make it so it j that's just required once per login or something like that. So we don't need to constantly keep adding that. But generally, it did it did work. We are no longer being asked for a password when connecting to the server. It's just that Windows is now asking us for a password to access the RSA token. Uh, <laughs> oops. But it's working, so that's great. And uh, final bits, we can just kind of clean things up. So rm that and rm this and now our server is kind of cleaned up we just have that ssh folder there and there's nothing else so uh all we did was remove both of them so rm is just going to delete a file so we just delete both the files we have out there and we should be good so that should be pretty much everything that gets uh, all of our stuff deployed uh, i don't know how to fix this thing uh, if anybody does know how uh, leave a comment because I I don't I don't know I'll try if somebody does comment it I'll pin it to the top of the the comments thing so that that other people can kind of see what's going on because I'm not sure unless it's a complex process there probably won't be another video on that and it doesn't really it just doesn't make much sense to do that but that that's the basics of, of setting up SSH stuff on Windows 10 so hopefully that was helpful and uh, and you guys can use it. I don't know how many people are running their own servers, but uh, if you are, there you go. Or even if you're if you're looking for a fancy way to connect to Git, this will work. So yeah, that's it for this video. So until next time, see you internet.